So uh, this part is now covered. And what next do we now need to do is um, let's come back on. Yeah. So we have we have been working with nodes and streams. We have built a stream also. This is rather simple that we have done. And now we intend to uh, provide stream descriptions running streams. So we ran the stream also. And the stream description, where is the stream description? Okay, so for this entire st stream, I'm selecting it and right click. And uh, let us add a new comment. So what is this? Which stream is this? Well, uh, descriptives of quantitative parameters iris so uh that is uh, the stream description that we have taken again i'll how do we come here i selected the entire stream through selection i right clicked on it i clicked on new comment that brought me over here and then i entered the type in the data so i'm deleting that oops Yeah, and I'm right clicking and I'm selecting delete. So that is now deleted. So uh, this is how you provide a de de description. Control S. Yeah. This is how you provide the description to your stream that you have built. And let's click on stream one here. You, know. you don't need stream one, so I select this and I click on close stream. So out here we have the iris analysis that we have conducted. And uh, this is the uh, iris parameters that were generated. So I think I can minimize this. Now working with models. So uh, let us click on modeling. Now these are the different kinds of models that are available to us out here. And these are there is a very wide uh, spread of uh, models that they have provided us in this modeling software modeling package. So uh, which of these models do you want to use? Let us take linear. It will conduct constructs an automatic linear modeling model. If you click on linear AS, what is that supposed to mean? Linear engine model builder node, which runs in analytics server. And we also have uh, a regression model. Constructs a predictive linear regression model. We also have C5.0. What is that? Constructs a predictive decision tree or rule set under the C5 algorithm. So uh, again, these are all the available models that they have. They have also segregated them as supervised or association models or segmentation models. So depending upon your application, you can choose to decide which kind of model do you intend to use. So again, let's come back on all. I'm selecting regression, something here. Um, if I want, what I'll do is from here to here. So I'm again right clicking this connect. I'm drawing from filter to the regression here. And um, now, okay, it's given. What what is it given? There are no targets set or provided, right? Let's right click on this. I click on edit. I click on fields. Use custom field assignments i select the target so what target do you want to select so a uh, sepal width and uh, what are the splits sepal a uh, length petal length and petal width click apply and i click ok do you have any partition no we don't have any partition okay i click apply and i click ok now see still there are no targets it's showing here so let's right click on this let's click on edit uh, what are the inputs? Well, we are taking the inputs. The output is what sepal width. I'm taking petal length and sepal length. Okay. I click OK. Again, there is out here no targets. So any and every time when you read here, there is no targets. It means that there is some error that is being happening. That is happening. So uh, again, right click on this. Click on edit partition. We have no partitions. And for the splits, I think even if you don't have any splits, that's fine. See, simple width, simple length, and petal length. So we can remove these two because what you are having as splits cannot be part of target and input. I click apply model. Yes, we are sticking with the 
a default setting of model. Fine. So uh, this all is what we have. Partition none. Apply. Click OK. Now let's come here and click Run. See again. Output field sepal width is incomplete. Type insufficiently specified for sepal length, petal length, and sepal width. So this is what you call as working with models. You may pick any model, but you'll have to set its types and parameters right. Oops. Sorry. Not connect. Edit. And now again, we come back on what? There is one more thing that we may not have done. I click on Iris. Okay. So what are the types here? Well, we have not selected any of the types here, right? And that could also be one of the reasons that we are having errors and issues with the uh, regression model that we've taken. Now pay attention here. Uh, if you click on read values, most likely your no targets values could change. So let's click on the read values. Yeah, see, you can see that this is now sepal width. When I say sepal width, it means it's your target uh, variable. Now, why did we click on read values? Because um, the values were missing for the given fields, although their measurements were provided. With. So if I click on preview, right now that's your preview. We have around how many 10 um, rows they have provided and one, two, three, four. five uh, columns are provided and I click OK. Click Apply and I click OK. Now, let us run the sepal width. So I right click on this and I click Run. Yes, it is now executing. So you can see that only this particular stream is getting executed. We are not executing this stream. Now let's see how long will it take to complete. It's not a very big data set. But then again, this is a uh, slight bit of a problem that it consumes lots and lots of resources and uh, output can take too long to generate, which is not quite the case with many other softwares. The only advantage uh, that we have with uh, IBM's SPSS modeler is uh, the coding or coming is completely eliminated. So now let's see how long will it take because it's the execution that is generally taking lots and lots of resources. And order it is showing only 50% complete. So you'll have to patiently wait for this too complete. Meanwhile, what I can also do is I can uh, open a new stream and uh, I can continue for you all with adding comments and annotations to nodes and streams and things like that. So let us go there and with that because this is taking slightly long. So I'm opening a new stream and what am I naming this stream as? You can save the stream as a uh, virus. We'll, we'll Keep this as iris only. It's a stream file.sdrs extension. I click save. Aha, finally it has generated the output. Now you can see here, what do you see here? This is a nugget that has been created. Okay, so if I double click on this, there. See, this is the output that has been generated. So what all have we generated here? Well, uh, there is a correlation out here. And then uh, you have the number of record splits, number of fields used. This is what all of this is in ascending order. Okay. And uh, so when I click on summary, when I click on annotations, let's let's click on model only first. So we are seeing here that uh, this is your model that it has generated. So how is it generated? Into this plus petal length into this and 2.314. So what, which kind of, this is a regression model any which way. Okay. So uh, we had only one predictor with the target variable. We had only one target variable and we had two of these were predictor variables. So the predictor variables are shown with their corresponding slopes. And this is 2.314 is what? It is its uh, y-intercept. So uh, if, we are, if we are to build it, then uh, we'll write the equation as what? Um, wait, let's come back here. Where is it gone? Let's come here. Let's right click, click on edit fields. Now, sepal width is what? Sepal width is your target variable. And set and petal length higher. They are your input variables. Okay. 
So uh, sepal width is equal to what? How will you write this equation? Sepal width is equal to sepal length into 0 0.14, or 0 0.148, over 1 for 5, 8 sepal length plus, uh, not plus, it's a minus out here because it's a negative sum, minus 0 0.102 times petal length and plus 2.314. 2.314 is the y intercept. So that is how your equation will look like or appear. But the more important aspect to this is that we have generated the output and uh, the regression output has been generated. And so fine, we'll save this. We'll have to keep saving it. See out here, the model has been generated. That is a sepal width model. These are the other outputs preview from uh, Iris JSON. And uh, so fine, uh, I will mention over here, we'll add a comment here again now. Where do we stand now? Yes, we are adding comments and annotations, and then thereafter we are saving the data streams. So right click uh, on this uh, yeah, on this nugget. Right click. Uh, we can yeah. There is a new comment that we can add here. So that what is this? This is the model, the regression model equation. what this is a regression equation mo uh, model equation right or, um wait sepal width yeah why sepal width because yeah that is a target variable for sepal width that is equal to what uh, sepal length plus petal length right yes Sepal length plus petal length. But how? We need to have its their variables also. So let's double click on this. It's the model that we have. Yeah. These are the build settings also they have provided. This is the training settings summary also. Welcome to this a little later. Then all this also. For now, we'll stick on this. Um, the inputs for what and the splits metal width was a split by model okay so uh now th this is these are the I mean, we are only sorting this based on the uh, model or, uh, or graph. You can also sort it as a petal width and it will show up over here. So, uh, right. That is uh, what your equation is, uh, 2.34, that is a y-intercept, uh, minus 0 0.102, uh, that is a petal length, and plus, there was a 0 0.208 multiplied by petal width, a uh, sepal width. So this is a regression model that we have generated over here. And this is already added to the stream. So we don't need to add it any separately with the stream. If you come here and you click on run again. So it is again generating the same equation. Let it take its time, no problem. Meanwhile, we'll come back on Iris. Let's come back on Iris and uh, let us also work towards adding, uh, saving the data stream. Now we already saved the data stream, so we don't need this anyway. I'll close this stream. Yeah, we'll stick with only this stream. It's just taking a bit of time. Now, again, we are running this again. Okay, so uh, there is not much of a change. But what did we uh, learn or study today? We uh, worked across nodes. That's a source node. That's your field ops node. That is your output node. That is your modeling node. And uh, 
no, we don't have any export node yet. Let's see if you can add export node over here. But until that, let this model run. Right, so uh, that is the output that has been generated. Right click on this. On view data that it will open that window. Yeah, so that is not much of a change. Yeah, it's retrieving your data that we have. That's the spreadsheet data that is provided, and these are the different charts. But okay, we are not coming on to this yet. But uh, this is how your regression model should appear or look like. So, you know, that's what. Iris parameters. Okay, this is done. Review from simple width. Yes. Review from JS1 node. Close. And then you have the streams for iris analysis. And uh, fine. So uh, this is what we have as far as today's session is concerned. And yes, let us take a quick review again. Yes, we work with model streams and everything and annotations, right? So, oh, fine. Let us come here, right click, click on edit, and let us add annotation. So, what annotation do you want to add? Uh, custom sepal width. Any tool tip, text or keywords, and all that? No, we don't have apply. I click OK. Okay. So, that's the annotation that we've added over here. You can see it. And uh, I'm clicking save. 